Hi, I'm Todd Ebling, owner and CEO of Dutchman Axles, and we decided to build a Jeep, a custom off-road Jeep that would handle just about anything. So we thought we would come to Moab, the place that has the most popular and renowned wheeling, and test our Jeep now that the Jeep is done. So full disclosure, this is our first Jeep build. This is our first off-road build. Uh, we've always messed with custom street cars, hot rods, and that sort of thing. And our bread and butter, honestly, is been in the past predominantly for hot rods, race cars, and muscle cars. And our last build was a custom 57 Chevy convertible, award-winning, and that was a lot of fun, and we experienced a lot of things building that. But this Jeep build, man, I'll tell you, it has been a completely different experience, and we've enjoyed every bit of it. It's such a different world, and now that we've had a chance to wheel here in Moab, Utah, we, it's just like, it is such an adrenaline rush. And the beauty here is like crazy, the scenery. It's like you break out your camera and you're filming, doing some hardcore wheeling and you can't help but want to film the beauty that is surrounding all these awesome trails. So we're showing you the finished Jeep build here in Moab. But if, if you want to follow along, feel free to like and subscribe, hit the notification, because we're going to take you back to the beginning and we're going to take you through the entire build process uh, in pretty good detail. And um, I think that you'll really enjoy that. <laughs> Man, the seat makes it feel easy, people. This is easy. All right, my name is Zach. Uh, I'm one of the project team members on this build, and uh, this is our first custom Jeep build video in the series. In this video, we're going to be covering um, the disassembly and body removal, or as we like to call it, demo day. Then we're also going to be covering uh, pulling off the end of the suspension brackets. There were lots of them on this build. Taking the frame to the body shop, uh, having it checked for straight, and then straightening it as needed. The installation of the brand new Genrite three and four link suspension cross members. The install of the engine and tranny mounts. Then the engine and tranny mock-up reinstalling the body to check for clearance on everything that we just mocked up, and a plenty of other suspension bracket fabrication. All right, enough talk, let's get to it. Thank you. Bye-bye. Our starting point for this build was not a new or low mileage Jeep, so we looked for one that had an affordable entry point as we knew we were not going to use any of the drivetrain or suspension components anyway. So we searched online and found a mechanic special. This one had a broken steering box, a bent drag link connector, and a bent front bumper on the right side. The sheet metal damage was pretty minimal, and our guest was a previous owner tangled with a big rock or something. It was an easy fix, and with a little effort, we had it back on the road. The purpose for putting it back on the road was, one, it gives us the ability to sell the engine and trans out of a running driving vehicle. The engine ran great and the trans shifted good, so they were definitely sellable items. 
and two, to take it off-roading and experience what a fairly stock Jeep can do. That way we would have a before and after experience, and this gave us our before. The first thing we noticed immediately was how unimpressive the stock suspension felt and traveled. The second biggest impression was the lack of power, especially with the AC on. Might be the coolest thing about a stock Jeep. It quickly became apparent that upgrades to a stock Jeep are definitely needed for more than mild off-roading. Once we had a buyer for the engine and trans, we had no excuse but to start good old demo day. Even though the engine and trans can be removed without taking off the body, all the frame mods that will come require that we remove the body. And once we realized how easy it was to remove it, it really became a no-brainer. And of course, if you decide to powder coat the frame for durability and rust prevention, something we're going to do, then the removal is necessary. So, it's off with the body. And I might add, a lift really helps. The bracket removal was fairly straightforward and depending on how thick the bracket or weld was, we used either a cutting torch or a plasma cutter. The cutting torch works better on the thicker welds and the plasma on the thinner brackets. And to be safe and avoid any miscommunications, we marked all the brackets that will be removed with some green spray paint. All that removal and grinding and sanding seems easy enough, but boy is it time consuming and tiring. To ensure we were starting with a nice straight frame before welding in the new 3 and 4 link cross members and related brackets, we decided to take the frame to a local body shop and have it checked and straightened if needed. It called for a minor amount of straightening, possibly because of stress relieving the frame by removing all those brackets or other unknown reasons. It's always better to check and verify than assume and end up with problems later on. The bracket install was rather straightforward using the Genrite suspension cross member and the Overland Performance engine mounts. The brackets from these companies were designed to line up with various design spots on the frame, making the install easy. First up was the front and rear cross members for the 3 and 4 link suspension setups. One of the cool things in the design of the front 3 link cross member is it serves as a tranny mount platform with no need for a separate cross member making for less clutter and a cleaner install. Next up was the engine mounts for the LS Motor Swap and a custom designed tranny mount for the GM 6-speed automatic. Easy enough, although there were several brackets that had to be custom designed and made by us, such as the upper and lower coilover mounts, the bump stops, track bar brackets, and more. This required a considerable amount of measuring and mock-ups, so we set the engine and trans in the newly welded in mounts and set the body back on the frame to make sure we were not running into any clearance issues. Alright everybody, 
Thanks for joining us on that first Jeep build video. If you uh, enjoyed the video, go ahead and give it a like. Comment down below what you might want to see in our next video. Uh, also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and uh, hit the notification bell so you know when we upload the next time. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. All right, I gotta get back to work, so enough chit chat. <laughs>